Hello there and welcome to another Starfield ship review video. In today's video we're going to be looking at the Shackleton. Now in my case there's no tier system. I believe usually when a ship doesn't have like a tier it's like a one-off custom ship based on another ship made by a manufacturer. But for the life of me I can't think of what it looks very sh similar. I feel like I reviewed a ship like this but I can't off the top of my head think. But yeah, it's it's mainly a Novatech vessel. I think it is all Novatech aside from... No, we actually we have an all Novatech ship for once, which is really nice. But yeah, um, so looking at the stats, we got a fuel of 75, which is pretty poopy, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. I feel like the minimum you need on a ship is about 200. With 75, you can, you can technically go places, but you might as well be on a space hopper the amount of times you're going to be dropping out of space, which... To be fair, if you're like early game, that's not a bad thing because you're exploring, which makes sense now I think of it. Because this is just looking at the price range, which we'll get to in a minute. This seems like a ship that's uh, kind of catered to upgrading from your frontier. You know, you want to get something with a little bit more pizzazz, as they say. So yeah, we've got 75 fuel. We've got 693 hull, almost 700 hull, which for a B class is kind of it's decent. It's not amazing, not crap it's just kind of on the middle we've got a cargo capacity of 730 which isn't too bad it's not obviously it's not the best and you can make ships or you can modify ships to have well over like several thousand cargo but if you're like kind of starting off and stuff it's pretty decent i wouldn't really recommend storing an awful lot in your ship when you're starting off anyway just sell everything because the last thing you want to do is like me who used to store like i think i had on my base ship when i was playing through my first new game plus or before New Game Plus, I had like sort of like 5k worth of stuff and I sat down in that goddamn the well, the trade authority I think I was there for about 2 hours selling stuff, so yeah always sell between your ventures, anyway so you got a B class reactor with 21 power, now that's a very low power for a B class B classes can go up to like 37 I believe so I would definitely recommend upgrading that immediately can only have a crew of 2, which is very low Especially for a B-Class. Like, B-Class, usually you're kind of moving up in the world. You're, like, you're starting to try a little bit of everything. You've met some people, you know. So, you could, obviously, when we do the teardown, I'll show you that you can definitely upgrade to a higher crew. It's got a jump range of 22 light years, which is pretty, pretty average. The lowest jump range I've seen is, like, 16, potentially, and the highest is 30. So, you can go to, in the current configuration, you could probably go to 60% of the systems. If you want to go further, I would recommend upgrading that jump range. Sorry, I... Does this have a shield of 1,500? What? Excuse me? Is my game bugged? Hold on a second. Hold on now. I need to go back in there. Anything I can help you with? I'm sure you can find... No, 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 you're, you're joking, right? Fifth! You're not joking. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really see that stat because I seen B-Class and seen all the other stuff and I assumed the shields are gonna be crappy, but that's the best shield in the game. I believe. No, it's not second best. Okay, 1500 shields, so... This thing is actually might be a capable combat vessel. So yeah, that, that shield is absolutely phenomenal. It's kind of an insane that it has such a crappy reactor, because I can already tell by looking at it, we're not going to be able to power everything. But yeah, weapon-wise, it's got a pair of... Uh, it's got a single ballistic cannon just on the uh, dorsal above the bridge, and then a pair of laser cannons on the starboard and port landing gear. So it's this cost me 103,840. Now if you have uh, perks uh, like me, I have a perk that decreases the cost of things. If you don't have that, it'll be a little bit more expensive. But yeah, so let's buy it. I bought it in um, the ship generic ship vendor on Hope Hope Town. Here it is, Hope Town. Here it is in the on the planet Palvo in the Hope in the Na Valo system. Sorry. And Valo and Narian are kind of on top of each other. There's Alpha Centauri and there's Sol. So we're going to jump to my usual spot and do a little uh, uh, overview. And then we'll do a teardown at the end of the video. 
All right, so here we are in the usual spot. Still can't get over that shield. Like it, if you're like starting off and you don't have the perks, I will do a double check when we tear it down. But I buy this ship just for the shield. That shield's phenomenal. But as you can see, it's got a uh, the standard kind of Nova Galactic styling to it. Very um space plane like. No wings this time, which is kind of unusual. But you know, is what it is. Anyway, let's try not to kill myself as I jump down. So you've got a, a Nova Galactic entryway underneath. Pretty nice, pretty, pretty spacious. I'm gonna grab the snake oil. And then we've got little windows here that you can't really see much, but you know. So in we go. Quite an interesting name, Shackleton. I have noticed that the vessels in this game, there's a couple of them where they're based on other vessels. So like, for instance, there's one called the Warwolf. It's also white and red. It's also kitted for combat, and it is based on another Shroud Eklund vessel. So I think in this game, if you see white and red ships, they're kind of kitted for combat. Anyway, we're inside this one by one storage room. Nova Galactic, we have the entryway there, and then we have the doctor there, which is always nice to see. So if we come through here, we have a an all-in-one berth, which is nice to have, I suppose. Now, this being a combat vessel, I would probably work on. I'd swap this out for a. I'd swap this out for a crew control room just for the extra crew space. Read any good books lately? I did not, Cora. And then we have the uh, bridge, which my favorite style of bridge. We have nice, nice, decent visibility. Not amazing visibility. It's it's no. Uh, uh, Contiki bridge from Shroud Eklund, but you know, it gets the job done. So we got the pilot seat there, and then we've got the co-pilot seat and the navigator seat. And they're kind of at a little dip, which is quite nice. You can just kind of look over and make sure they're doing their calculations. But anyway, let's take it off and see how that reactor performs. Like I said, I'm not expecting an awful lot of power, but that shield got down. So I recently did a review of these engines before, and oh my god, okay. So this is interesting. I don't think I'm going to be able to power anything. So yeah, these engines are quite, quite potent. They're like quite beefy for like their size. I believe they're A-class. Yeah, like I said, I have a, I have a perk that decreases my power or increases my power by five. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to be removing five. Um, now, obviously, we're going to have to use a lot of points here. But really quick weapon wise, we've got that single ballistic cannon mounted ventrally, dorsally, sorry. And then we've got a pair of those lasers mounted on the port starboard. Now the shield is very strong. So sadly, we're going to have to pull from it because in this current configuration, we just, yeah, we'll want to do a max speed test. We've got a max speed of 150 pretty decent and then we have a boost speed of boost speed of 450 okay so not as fast as I was expecting but still quite good now if I was flying this vessel myself I would definitely keep that shield up to max and then keep the engines a little bit less you see obviously at this current config we get like 110 uh, let's check through some agility I'm gonna actually pull that back down just so we can get a more accurate agility test so if we do a quick pitch Oh yeah, this is very fast. This is easily a 10. Very fast. Do a quick yaw. Yaw's not as fast, maybe like an 8. And then the roll. Roll, roll, roll is... That's like the fastest I've ever seen this ship. What the hell? But yeah, this is a really cool ship. We're gonna go do a teardown real quick and uh, see what it's made of. Okay, so here we are in the ship breakdown. So we got three tiers here. Top tier, the only habitat module we have is an NG-2 docker top from Nova Galactic. And then we have the R-3000 Alpha Grav Drive from Relodyne A-Class 23 Grav Jump Thrust, which uh, gives us 22 light years. And then for the engines, in the top at least, we have a pair of these White Dwarf 1000 engines from Relodyne A-Class. A uh, three power required for each of them. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, engine thrust of 4,650, maneuvering thrust of 2,445. And then the, 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 <coughs> excuse me. And then the star of the show, which is this. This is the 28T Defender Shield Generator from Dogstar. 
It's a B-class, got a max power of 12, and 1,500 shield, which is, like, astronomical. So, yeah, like, that, that shield is, like, insane. Like, let me see if I can do a comparison, because I know there's shields. Where are you? Okay, so... The, so we have, we have, um... If we go into, like, the B classes, we have... There it is there. That's the 28 Defender. So we have this one, which is 1450. This is a Vanguard Questline 1 that is locked behind a Questline. It's slightly worse. And then I believe we've got a C class. It probably won't be... Oh, no, here it is. So this is the most powerful shield in the game, to my knowledge. This, um... 1600. So for an extra 100... Like, if you put it this way, if you have yet to get Starship Design 4, which is kind of tricky to get, it's not that really hard to get, but it's like, you know, I would recommend buying this ship just for this shield. This shield is phenomenal. But anyway, getting back to the rest of the ship. So for the aesthetics on this top level, we just have a Nova Cowling 2L T4, TF, sorry. And then for the middle of the ship, we have a Megalin C1 cockpit, Nova Galactic. We got 200 cargo, 2 crew space. We have behind it, we have the Nova Galactic all-in-one berth, 2x1B, which, uh, yeah, I would probably swap this out for a Nova Galactic control room just because this is meant to be a combat vessel. Well, it's not meant to be. Obviously, you can do whatever you want with it, but with that shield, you might as well just start killing pirates and stuff. So I would definitely want to pump up the crew just to get some extra perks. And then behind that, we have the Nova Galactic 1x1 storage room. As for the weapons, we have a single Mauler 140, 104L cannon from Horizon Defense, A-Class, 960 range, 3.49 fire rate, 13 damage to the hull, and 4 power. And then we have a pair of these Dragon 221P megawatt pulse lasers from Horizon Defense, A-Class, 1200 range, 6.65 fire rate, 9 shield damage, and 3 power, which is pretty decent, very nice. We have this single Titan H uh, 350HE tank from Nautilus, 75 grav jump fuel. Uh, what is that? How much does that weigh? That weighs 12. So let me see if we can do anything better fuel. So that, 75. So there's, you, you could do 100 there, obviously, but we could go a little bit better. Let me see. See, these ones, I usually go with these ones here. You could potentially put this there and you get like 100 instead of 75 and you could obviously go bigger. You've got some of these ones here, like this one here, 210. Now obviously this one is almost three times the mass of it. So if we were to use this, we'd lose like a light year obviously, but you can jump a bit further. It's just something to keep in mind. And then over here we have a 300 cm ballast cargo hold from Sexton Shield Systems, 320 cargo. And then at the back we have the Amundon Z Machine 2000 reactor, 21 power B class. Now I'm going to tell you straight away, get that out immediately. So I would easily strap in this bad boy here, 33 power. We're getting an extra 12, which should be more than enough to run the shield generator and some of the weapons. And then we have another pair of these White Dwarf engines from Relodyme, same stats. Now, obviously, it's weird that it's using A-class engines, considering. I'd probably recommend upgrading to... I'd recommend, like, at the very least, maybe upgrade to these uh, 1020 ones. You're getting double the thrust and a little bit more maneuvering. Or if you wanted to go the route of B-Class, you could probably get some. Let me see here. Do we have any kind of... Maybe not them. They look a bit funky. Maybe not them either. Eh, maybe. Eh, what's the price? Eh, you could probably... You could potentially strap these on here and um, it save yourself a little bit. You get a lot more thrust out of them. A pair of these will provide you with 14, what is that, 28k versus 4, 8, 12, 16, 16. So an extra bit of thrust. And it's only going to cost you like an extra 2k. So at the end of the video, I'll just show what that would look like, just in case you want to know. But yeah, and then we have uh, four of these uh, landing gear NG15 
port and starboard and these are the same landing gear it's just when you go to buy them on titan which is how where i find them there's like two versions and these versions have like the retrograde thrusters for slowing down and then on the bottom here we have the ng6 landing bay from nova galactic and we have a 100 cm ballast cargo from sexton shield system so all in all pretty interesting i'm going to put it back together real quick i just want to see how those engines would look so if we were to just rip these off real quick and then pair these there. Okay, so that looks a little better. And then obviously we've got some little snap points up there. Now we could, in theory, again, I... I know I shouldn't really been doing this because like it's not really a review but I when I see a ship like this I feel like you have to kind of improve it a little bit because in the base variant especially with that with that engine or not engine sorry that uh shield that's a phenomenal shield what am I looking for I was looking for cargo let me see let me strap some of these bad boys now you could strap some of these no they stick no I wouldn't wouldn't do that um let me see can you strap anything else no currently you can't but yeah this is Obviously, putting these in, you get uh, more mobility. I think you get more mobility. Do you get more mobility? Let me just go back. Oh, no, you don't get more mobility. I'm an idiot. Really? Really? What are they? 100 versus what? What were those ones? Oh, it's because the mobility is, is done by maneuvering thrust, so eh, technically, yeah, I'd probably just swapped upgrading these to the the White Dwarf 10, these ones here, the, the 1020, just get a little bit more. But yeah, that was the ship. Uh, let me know what you guys think of it. Have you guys found it? If you haven't found it and you're looking to upgrade your combat vessel, you want a good shield, I would definitely recommend this. With this shield and then you get a better reactor you can put on some more powerful weapons and you can just rip into some some enemies but as always thanks for watching guys don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other reviews uh, bye bye